The Google Home app is rolling out new routines for you, which means that today you could set up a routine to turn on your lights when the doorbell is rung, or to set the mood when you start playing media on your Chromecast. Motion sensors can be used to start routines now, although you won't find other types of sensors, but the options have been seriously expanded in the Google Home app. It's now broken out into household or personal routines, and the big difference there is that household routines can be started with smart products, whereas personal routines have access to alarm dismissals as starters. Otherwise, the routine types are fairly similar and most of the options are very similar. But today, if you wanna start a routine with a device, you might find some restrictions. And I already mentioned that the other types of sensors are not available today. The other confusing thing to me is that Nest cameras that we bought just last year aren't able to start routines right now. The motion sensors are even really restricted at the moment because my SmartThings sensors won't start routines in Google Home. In fact, I was so confused by this that I chatted with Jennifer over at The Verge and she informed me that she was only able to get the Hue motion sensors to start routines at the moment and they had to be connected to the Hue Hub in order to do that. So it's definitely not that useful yet. Although there are a few things you can do today already that will help you in your home. And there is another big improvement from Google that I will show you in just a moment as we continue Brian's lightning round of Smart Home News. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I hate wasting time. So we're gonna get right into what's going on with that Google Home app. Now you might not see those new routines in the Google Home app and if you don't, understand that this is a slow rollout, but joining the preview program in the Google Home application is the way to potentially get this ahead of the rest of the world. The same holds true with a URL that Google has opened to some people. The first thing to do to check this is to make sure that you are logged in to your web browser with the same Google account that you're using with the Google Home app. Then head to home.google.com and you might find that it opens up to an interface with all of your Nest cameras both old and new. This interface is still being developed and other new features will be added, but today you can turn on and off your cameras and view them all on one screen. There are a couple of different ways to organize your cameras and you can go into each camera individually. You can maximize the view there and you can zoom in and out using the buttons. Plus, if you turn on the speaker, you can actually speak through a connected mic on your computer through the Google Nest speaker or through the camera. So it's like drop in all the time. And that's actually fantastic. And I know many of you are waiting on that new version of the Google Home app and the preview that Google had offered many of us. That's still not released at this time, although I'm gonna keep checking so I can demo that preview for you when it comes out. And speaking of cameras showing up all on one screen, not only did Amazon release new devices like the Fire TV Cube third gen right here and their new Echo Dot, but they also have released this statement that by the end of 2022, you will be able to ask your Echo Shows to show multiple cameras. Now on everything up to the Echo Show 15, you should be able to get four cameras on the screen at once. And on the Echo Show 15, it should be five. Now I don't have all the details on this just yet, but as soon as I can show you that one, I will. And speaking of these products, if you wanna know more about these new ones, that's in our monthly unboxing and showcase video that you can find in the links below. There's lots of new stuff on these. By the time I release this video, Matter will have been released officially at an event that's taking place in Amsterdam on November 3rd. I'll have a video come out shortly thereafter of what I found at the event, but for now, it's officially out on the market and you will find it on the SmartThings Hubs 
right now, as well as Apple HomePod Minis. You will find Matter and Thread are going to be released more and more on different platforms like Amazon and Google's, and I've been asked by many of you what to do right now. The fact is that most of these updates are just gonna roll out to your existing products and we will just have to wait for that to happen. Many of the companies that are releasing these updates are telling us as they come out. And as I record this video, there are no end devices. So there's no bulb or plug or anything that you can start using with Matter, at least not as I record this. What keeps happening though is hubs are coming out with announcements around Matter and Thread. IKEA's Dira Jera hub is now out, and although I just got one the other day, it should have Matter and Thread very soon. Also, Homey Pro is being revised, and that hub looks a lot better than the previous version as it's lost its big globe shape. It has just about every standard and technology that you'd want on a hub, and plus, in quarter two, two, <laughs> in quarter three of next year, Matter and Thread will come to that hub. So while I know we're all waiting on pins and needles for the products and the technology to start changing our homes, we gotta wait a little longer. Now one of the companies you don't have to wait for is Samsung because they have Matter already on the V3 and AOTech hubs. However, again, we don't have Matter devices to work with there. Instead, why you don't have to wait is because of the Edge driver program that is moving forward and it has opened some doors for you. Today you can add a Cara devices directly to the Samsung SmartThings hub. But I spoke with the team at Acara this week and they were very clear with me about what will work and what won't work initially for the Edge driver program. What you're going to notice is that none of this is based in North America and very little of it can be found in Europe, but this list tells you everything that's going to work right now with SmartThings. You can actually hit the add button in the SmartThings app, and if you have one of these in your home, you can begin Zigbee pairing with your SmartThings hub. These are Zigbee 3.0 devices, and what you should understand is it's Korea's market that's being focused on because the Samsung team is based out of there and that's where they bring the most advanced features to initially. I know you American friends of mine are used to that being in the US, but in this case, you gotta wait a little. But Akara gave me some more insight into how they will be handling Matter. I told you before that many of their hubs will get Matter and Thread, and they reconfirmed that that will be coming. But what they told me this week is that would be shortly and that, I think, means that a lot of companies are going to release their Matter updates after the November 3rd launch of Matter. Now, I know that the Home Assistant community is gonna skewer me for saying this, but I feel like something is off right now with Home Assistant. I'm not talking about the delays to some of the hubs being delivered because that's fairly normal for Kickstarter type projects, but there is, and has been for a little while now, a works with Home Assistant program. And companies are falling in line with this because Jasco and Third Reality both announced compatibility with the works with Home Assistant program very recently. And I get that Amazon and, and Google are doing this thing, but I thought the point of Home Assistant was that it worked with everything. And having another logo and another certification that someone has to hit is just expanding the issues that we as consumers are going to have to deal with. So I'd hoped that that community was going to be different, but apparently we just have another company. Go ahead, fire away home assistant crazies. Now, of course, we're talking about community and I have to tell you that I am so lucky to have the channel members that I have here on Automate Your Life. Today you have to be subscribed to the channel and then you will get a join button that shows up beside it. Members today get many perks because they support me as a creator and they support Automate Your Life as a whole. So thank you to our members who watched this video just a few days ago. It sounds like products in the US are about to get a cybersecurity label. Now last month I had told you that the EU was looking at making sure that companies were keeping up with security requirements on their smart home gear, but the US is taking an additional look at labels physically printed on devices and marketing to make sure we understand the risks associated with these devices and how they perform. Not only that, 
But these were big companies and big associations working on this with the US government. So this is going to happen early to mid next year, or at least we'll get a start on it. Let's rapid fire some brand new smart home gadgets. The Xiaomi X10 Plus is a robot vacuum that can empty itself at the station and refill water at the base station. It has 4,000 pascals of suction power too. That's very similar to the new Narwhal Frio, which can adjust the downward force and humidity of the mopping attachment. It'll lift the mop too when it needs to switch, but it sucks less than the X10 Plus at 3,000 pascals. Google gave us another view of the Pixel tablet last month, and it's definitely shaping up to be a device many of us will look at. Which, by the way, it sounds like Apple is finally nearing what they're calling a cradle for the iPad 2 for HomeKit users. Roku, or parent company TCL, launched a whole lineup of new smart home gear. But you might notice that it looks a lot like Wise's gear. That's because it is. And the question I have here is, is TCL about to buy Wise? Speaking of which, Noonlight was purchased by Alarm.com. So here come the mergers, folks. What's funny about that one is that could mess with a lot of companies who are using Noonlight for monitoring services. But speaking of Wise, their new V3 Pro has 2K resolution and I like the new look. Also, there's more on-device or edge processing, which should eliminate subscription costs and it will speed up the detection system and make sure that you get those notifications really quickly. I'm bringing one in to test, but I'm thinking this is the right level for many of you. Govi's M1 LED strip is great and I tested that, but they also released some outdoor permanent lights that could compete with some of the more expensive permanent installations, thankfully, because spending $20,000 on outdoor lights is ridiculous. 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 Speaking of ridiculous and unnecessary, the Unify AI DSLR has a 10 megapixel sensor, and yes, it has a DSLR lens. That would be normal if it was a DSLR camera. It's actually a security camera, and because it's so ridiculous, I want it for sure. Every month, I try to make sure that I tell you a little bit about the future, and Scandinavian researchers released a study that said they transmitted nearly double the internet's worth of data through a fiber optic cable in one second using a laser powered chip. They sent 1.84 petabytes through this cable, which is almost double what the internet sends every second, which kind of makes Wi-Fi 6E sound like garbage, doesn't it? Before I tell you about things that died this month, I want to tell you about a couple of creators that I think have done excellent things. Now you can see I'm wearing the Bearded Tinkers shirt here, and I really like this shirt. The Bearded One, as I like to call him, has done a lot of work on energy efficiency and saving energy within your smart home, and I think that his three videos now are all required viewing, just to give you ideas for saving energy in your home, especially with the winter coming. All of those are in the description below. Read at Smart Home Solver ripped apart an article by the folks at Control4 by showing how the DIY smart home still makes a lot more sense than a professional Control4 installation. And while he didn't say that it was them doing some marketing uh, using fear tactics, I'll say that straight out. So I'm glad he did this video and you should check it out. Let's talk about the stuff that died. It's always a sad state of affairs for some, but this month there was one that caught me off guard. Amazon's glow died and it was incredibly fast and without any sort of fanfare at all. This was a device launched last year at their hardware event and by this year's hardware event, it was clear they weren't going forward with it. I was recently asked about the Google Assistant getting a new version on If This Then That, and it meant that you had to redo all of your applets for the Google Assistant. That's painful, and it's actually because of Google, not because of If This Then That. But something that I think we might see a few more times is that Miros 
killed their if this and that integration. And this isn't a video doorbell dying as much as it's a video doorbell feature dying. This is where you gotta be very careful when you buy a product based on a promise because Netatmo said that their smart video doorbell would no longer get HomeKit secure video. It was cited to be coming, but they've cited hardware issues and can't make it happen. Now I spent a lot of time today talking about matter and that's because it's a very important topic for everyone's smart home. And if you don't know what matter is or you wanna learn more about it, the playlist up on screen now will tell you about the recent announcement as well as how to handle this new standard coming into your home. So check that out, make sure you're buying the right products and you're doing the right things in your home today. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.